lost and protected in the blood, all those that were created to the sins. So they follow Paul to deceive them in many ways. That's why Jesus they don't have anything good to say to them. Jesus even removed his coming from them when he said they are wretched and naked. So this person says, no, it's Jesus, not Paul. Paul is the false apostle who Jesus commits for testing and finding liar. He's a false apostle. And as you go through and you look at this, there's a lot of people in the world today, because they don't know how to rightly divide, they say things like this, we follow Jesus instead of Paul. And when we say, no, 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 we're under Paul's ministry, they go, oh, you follow Paul instead of Jesus. Do we follow Paul instead of Jesus? No, we follow Paul and Jesus. Because the only way to truly follow Jesus is to follow Paul. Because Jesus gave what? Revelations to Paul. So you're not even following Jesus and everything he said, unless you're following Paul. Because Jesus only said a little bit here, then he told you a whole lot. Like, what if I came to you and, and person I told you a bunch of stuff, and we started a religion, which would be pretty dumb, but I'm just saying what we did, and then I left. And everything I said, well, the time we were together, you took that as your religion. And then later I, I, I mailed you a letter and said, oh yeah, I forgot to say this. And you said, well, forget it. We don't accept that because we don't accept what you said right here. Wouldn't that be silly? No, if I gave you further, and I was the leader of your religion, you would take the rest of what I had to say, wouldn't you? So that's how this works. Jesus said certain things here to a certain people. Because they rejected him, he comes over here and says, now Paul, here's what else I want people to know. So you're not actually following Jesus unless you're following Paul. How do we know that? Three times Paul says, be followers of me. And one time he says, be followers of me as I am of Christ. So Paul is not a deceiver. Paul is not a false apostle. Paul is not deceiving anyone. Paul received revelation from Jesus to get to us. So you're not even following Jesus unless you follow what Jesus told Paul as well. So what a sad thing that a lot of people nowadays just go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they forget the rest of the revelations to Paul. That's very sad. So we're going to get into all those verses here in a moment. But I just want to make that clear. Is that clear? Everyone understand that? So yes, there's a ministry of Jesus. Yes, there's a ministry of Paul. And yes, they are different. People say, no, no, no. It's the same ministry. We're going to see that here in a minute. One was born to Jews. The other was born to Gentiles. Now Paul was also a Jew first. But you know in the book of Acts, he says, from henceforth, only go to the Gentiles. So when you see there are two ministries, yes, we follow Jesus. But we rightly divide because Jesus said some things that are not for us today. How dare you break it? Let me show you those first. Go to Matthew chapter 19, and let me show you how they don't line up with Paul. Paul says we're saved by what? Faith alone? In the blood alone. It's not by our works, it's by faith. Well, Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16, look what it says. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I, might, I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why cause me thou be good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Why did Jesus answer this man and say, If you keep the commandments, you'll have eternal life? That's a works gospel, isn't it? Is that Paul? Why would he say such a thing? So when you read through Matthew, you find a lot of things that don't line up with Paul. What, what possibly could be the reason that Jesus told a guy to keep the commandments? Well, he had an idea. So it's still the Old Testament. That's still what they were supposed to do in that dispensation. And we read from Paul later that the law is the schoolmaster brings to Christ. So if he had kept doing it after Jesus died and was buried and rose again, well, then it would have led to Christ. So you see why Jesus would have said that? You go over here in Pensacola, and I think it's close to, uh, I'll do, where Mulding is. It's close to that road. It's not really close to that road. It's close to that road. But you drive by, and there's this church that has this, and it says, keep his commandments, enter into life. They go to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and try to find salvation. And they don't realize, no, that was for the Jews before the cross. We're not over here, we're over there. So you can really get messed up in the book of Matthew if you don't write the divide. And that's what we need to do. We need to write the divide. Let me give you another example. Matthew chapter 5, verse 30. Okay, the Bible says that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. So Jesus came to bring grace. All right? Matthew chapter 5, verse 30. Tell me if this sounds like grace to you. Matthew 5, 30. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Are we supposed to have in our bookstore in the church now a bunch of machetes as well? I say, oh yeah, well that's so you can obey Matthew chapter 5. You know, like we have place out back, you can cut off your right hand with it if you want. Is that for us today? That doesn't sound like grace to me to cut off your right hand. When can that possibly fit in this conversation that verse? Well, there's a time when the mark of the beast is given, and it's given where? In your right hand. People say, oh, break the trust. What does the verse say? Read the verse again at the very end of that verse, that not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. When does somebody get cast into hell? When Jesus comes in Armageddon, all those with the mark of the beast get cast into hell. My best guess would be maybe that's talking about this time over here, because that's not Paul. That's not grace. That's not, that's weird, isn't it? So don't go cut your hands off. Don't go plug your eyeballs out. This is different. This is Jesus giving the kingdom gospel. By the way, this is the kingdom. This is the millennial kingdom and a thousand year reign of Jesus. Okay, are you all with me? This is why we need to have dispensations. Let me give you another example of the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. Matthew 10, 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Are we saved by enduring to the end? Well, if you're Calvinist, that's what you think. But what does Paul say? Uh, he says, I know whom I have believed, and he persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. But he says, all our trespasses are forgiven. I can't go to hell if I try, because I'm forgiven, and I'm born again. There's no getting born again again. It's a one-time deal. I can lose rewards, but I can't lose salvation. So, Jesus says one thing, Paul says another. Most people go and throw Paul out and only follow Jesus. No, follow them both, and ask the question, how can they both be right? And the answer is simple. Jesus' ministry was to Jews. And as you read the Bible, you understand that the Jews rejected their Messiah, so God's taking it more to Gentiles now, and the gospel is going more to them. Okay? And now, Jesus revealed more to Paul for this time. You know, there's seven mysteries in the Bible that were revealed to Paul. So let's start showing you these verses so you can understand this. And uh, I just want to clear up some of the misconceptions that people have. Some people say, oh, people like great religions follow Paul. Jesus, that's a lot. We follow Jesus and Paul. But we rightly divide because we see Jesus saying some things that is not what Paul said. The only way it makes sense is that Jesus said it at that time before the cross to the Jews. And he applied to them then, contingent upon whether they accepted it. Now that they reject it, now it's a little bit different. Oh, you think it's different? Yeah. Salvation is different. I've seen my video on the author of Salvation. Jesus, you'll see that. So, Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. What does Jesus say of his own mouth? Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Are you going to listen to Jesus? I do. What did Jesus say? I came in my earthly ministry only to the Jews. So the whole ministry of Jesus, he's just dealing with Israel. It's not for us, for salvation. It was for them, because they were going to get salvation first. But they accepted it. But they rejected it. So, how do you argue with Jesus? Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff in the book of Matthew
Paul says this, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God and the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. So do you see the difference between the ministry of Jesus Christ and the ministry of Paul? I hope you do. Otherwise you might end up going to hell. Maybe if you keep the commandments you'll go to hell. That is so Old Testament. Why don't you go over to the New Testament? Why are you trying to go there? That's not salvation. God gave to Paul the what? The gospel. Don't get into that here in a minute, but because Jews rejected the Messiah, God called Paul and used him to take something to the Gentiles. Why? I said it earlier. Romans 11 says you provoke the Jews to jealousy. So they wake up and they realize, oh, we blew it. We botched it. You know, right now in Israel they're looking for Messiah. And they're thinking that this will be the right one. The thought never enters into their head. No, the right one is right there. But someday they'll believe it because of the book of Revelation we read. Two witnesses show up. And guess what? It's the law of the prophets. It's Moses, the law of the prophets, Elijah. So they're going to have to believe that it was all according to that promise. So you've got to understand that. You've got to understand that. So Paul's in the Bible because the Jews rejected the Messiah. And the Bible teaches that God gave revelations to Paul. Okay, let's go to Revelation chapter 1. If you truly love Jesus, then you want everything that Jesus said, don't you? So if Jesus used Paul to give certain revelations to him or us, you would want to go to Paul and say, no, what did Jesus tell you, Paul? So you Paul. Correct? So why would you throw him out? If you throw Paul out, you're throwing out the revelations of Jesus Christ to us today. I've got to make it as plain as I can. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 12. But we'll start verse 11. Galatians 1 11. But I said about you, brother, the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. So Paul says, I'm not preaching the gospel of me. Isn't that interesting? For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now look at chapter 2, verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel, which I preached among the Gentiles, but I believe to them the interpretation, lest by any means I should learn how to play the So he says, revelation and revelation. So there was something revealed to the apostle Paul. What was it? Paul says it's the gospel. Well, now we get a little confused because Matthew Carter called gospels. But Paul says, no, no, that's not the gospel. This is the gospel. So, what, so quickly, what is the gospel? It's found in verse 15, 15 verse 24. And it has five parts. What are the five parts of the gospel? Christ died for our sins. Was buried. Rose again. And then twice it says, according to the scriptures. So according to what you saw in there. Just get smaller when it says, according to the scriptures. Now, these are the five points of the gospel according to Paul. But one of these is new. The other ones are what Matthew Mark Luther John preached what Jesus did. What is the different one? Christ died. Well, even in his earthly ministry, Jesus says, I'm going to die. He was married. When you go to the book of Acts, you find Peter. You know what Peter says? Fit his brother. He died. But he rose again. And the Bible says he fulfilled this prophecy for the scriptures. He was buried. But they don't mention this. So what was it that was revealed to Paul? That's where we get into the who versus what. I don't want to confuse you, but the earthly ministry of Jesus was all about, hey, he's going to believe who he is because he's the disciple. Because they rejected who he was, God called Paul and said, Paul, go tell everybody it's what I did and save them because I did it on the cross. And that's what salvation is. It's what Jesus did. Not just who he is, but what he did. So without that revelation, how do you say it? What does Romans 1 16 say? Paul says this, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation of everyone that believeth to the Jew first gospel. I just quoted by memory again. And so he says that's the gospel that saves. And he says it's my gospel. Now go to chapter 2 of verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So the revelation given to him is that it was for our sins. If you read Paul out, you believe Jesus died and buried and rose again. But you also believe in who he is, are you going to go to heaven? Believe in just that. That's not enough. You have to rest in his finished work, in his blood. You have to rest in what he did, and your faith must be in what he did, not what you did. Over here, you can believe Jesus died and buried and rose again, but then think I'll keep the law because he's not king, and you gotta go to hell because you're not trusting in him, you're trusting in your self righteousness. So you see the importance of Paul, Lord, I hope so. Because God revealed more to Paul, more to him, was a message of salvation. I won't read it, but there were seven mysteries given to Paul. Without going to Paul, you can lose those mysteries. You should So to truly follow Jesus, you must follow Paul. So he is a true apostle, not a false apostle, as some people try to deceive him. Okay? Can we understand this? It opens a whole Bible to you, doesn't it? So for sake of time, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 16 and 17. We'll go there real quick and we'll move on and start in this book. But you've got to understand that what we're going to be reading in the book of Matthew, first and foremost, is all of this. So it's kind of hard to find people reading the book of Matthew to us in church. But he was before he died, and he said, I'll get the news to the Bible. So it's kind of hard to find out to you. Because some people say, well, I mean, not you. But that's where the news to the Bible. It only teaches you to get some results. You're not here to tell us what you should have. Matthew 27, 35, Jesus is crucified. Matthew 27, 50, he dies. So, the New Testament doesn't start with Matthew 